Hi guys, it's Caleb here. Today I'm going to share with you how I help first time home buyers through the entire HDB buying process. Stay tuned to the end because I'll walk through with you how first time home buyers are able to go through a proven process for a smoother HDB purchase and also from the securing of financing to find the ideal neighborhood. You also get insider tips on computing finances, negotiating prices, avoiding mistakes and more. By the end of this video, you'll feel ready to take on your HDB purchase with confidence. So stick around as you dive together in this journey. So before buying the first property, the first thing that you need to do in all HDB purchase is to do up a HFE. So what is HFE? HFE simply means Housing Flat Eligibility. It's a system whereby you go into HDB flat portal and apply to uh, get this HFE paper done up. So what is the objective of this HFE? It is to tell you two things. The grant amount and also the HLE loan amount that they can give it to you. So let me just show you an example over here. So this is an example of a HFE application. After it's done, they'll tell you how much is the CPF grant you're eligible for. So it shows you the uh, grant amount over here and also the enhanced housing grant amount. So together you can understand if you buy a 4 room or lower, you will be getting 115k grant or if you buy a 5 room or, big, or bigger, it will be 85k grant. So it, it's a much more structured approach based on your income that you have already submitted. Then they give you the, the grant assessment amount. Compared to last time where you don't know what's the grant amount, only until you buy already, then you'll find out what's the loan uh, grant amount given. So another thing is that um, proximity housing grant, they will also show you if you live with your parents, you'll get 30000 and But if you live near your parents, you'll get $20,000 grant. So the second thing that like what I mentioned to you, they will show you what is the housing loan eligibility amount that you'll be able to get. So there's three different options, prudent, moderate, maximum. So if you go for maximum, they'll show you the maximum amount you can get. Uh, in this case, my clients click on the moderate, so it will just use the moderate amount to play around with it. So 252 was the moderate amount that uh, my clients is able to get. Next, it's that we will start computing the finances. So usually, computing the finances, there is four components in finding out how much you can use to buy the property. So first thing is grant, second thing is CPF OA, third thing is the proximity housing grant, if you are not then just leave it, third thing will be the loan and last of all the cash. So grant we are clear, 115,000 you are buying a forum or lower, uh, CPF it depends on how much CPF you have, in this instance my buyer has about 150,000 CPF and proximity grant if you are staying near a parent is 20,000 and loan uh, just now my client got about 252,000 loan and cash she is able to come up with 20,000. So total budget, this will form your entire budget, $557,000 altogether. So with this budget, you can go and buy something that is slightly less than that because you still have to factor in agent fees, you need to factor in stamp duties, legal fees, uh, miscellaneous fees, and so on and so forth. So don't go and see that you are able to afford 557, you go and buy something that's 557. Buffer about 20, 30,000, and that will be enough to uh, determine what's the budget that you are looking at. So the next thing that we have to understand when it comes to buying a HDB is this thing called a timeline management understanding of how it works. So when, it, when, when you go and buy HDBs, Typically speaking, there are a lot of sellers these days are looking for extension of stay. So what is extension of stay? Extension of stay simply means that after the sellers sell their house, they are thinking of buying another house also. Then that's when they need to use this money that they have, their current house, to buy the next house also. That's why they have this interim period whereby they do not have any place to stay. And that's when they require the extension of stay after selling this house to continue staying in this house for free uh, before they get the keys to their next house. So uh, that's when you have to understand clearly what is the timeline you need to you need to factor in. Okay, let me draw it out for you. So when it comes to the timeline itself, how does 
how does it work so when there is an extension of stay let's say today you can buy a property you need to put in a one thousand dollars deposit so during that period of time uh you will go and get your valuation and after the value is out you need to put in another 4k worth of deposit okay so of course this 1k 4k is negotiable but typically standards is around this uh, this range amount itself so after that you will be submitting to hdb and after that about about 11 weeks later that will be the completion so total period between here to here it's about four months okay when there is an extension what happens is that during this period they will ask for a three months extension period so all together from here all the way to here is seven months so you can see clearly that if there is an extension of stay buyers like yourself may need to budget in more time in the current place that you are staying so next thing is to understand what is your desired location that you as a buyer want okay so uh, everyone has different factors or different desires in terms of ranking because some buyers place a lot of emphasis in um, size some buyers place a lot of emphasis in renovation some buyers place a lot of random emphasis in terms of um, floor level so you need to rank these factors as important as you know how because at the end of the day you cannot have everything that you want unless you are willing to pay a high price if you're willing to pay a high price then you can have everything that you want but if you if you do not have a huge budget then you have to rank it in accordance to uh, the most important factor because sometimes if you want a high floor you might need to pay big money for it well renovated you need to pay a high price for it if you want a bigger size also you have to pay a high price for it what is considered a low price or low criteria if you're okay with low floors generally it will not be very expensive if the unit has ethic quota restrictions what is ethic quota restrictions let's say for example he's a chinese seller but he's not able to sell to an indian in uh, who is Li living in an Indian majority area so when when in that kind of situations then chances are he might not be able to fetch quite a high price understand what's the most important criteria helps a lot in your home search because sometimes you might not be able to get what you want but you might be able to get your top three choice at the end of the day so the next point is understanding what's your criteria it's important and that's when you zoom in now on what is the house that you're looking for because uh in the house that you're looking for let's say for example you have already determined that my top three choice is i want a forum flat and i want uh near mrt and i want something that it's uh near something that fifth floor and above if near mrt it's a huge desire huge criteria for you what you could do is just look around in the places that around um, the MRT. So let's say, for example, you want to look for properties in Sengkang. So we look at just Sengkang and we look at four room flat, three, three bedrooms. So I'll just filter out based on four room flat. So four room flat, I've seen um, a lot of different kinds of unit. The prices starts from as low as 450, as high as uh, as high as $850,000. $850, so you have to align with the budget that you want. So if let's say, for example, uh, I want something that is near MRT. So I'll just focus my search based on units that is near MRT within my budget area. So let's say probably my budget area is only 500, uh, 530. So I only have not much choice Probably these three units at Anchorville, this one unit at 203A, Compassville, these two units at uh, Compassville, and another one unit at Compassville. So maybe I'm not being realistic at the end of the day if my budget is only 530. So to a certain extent, I might not get a good unit at the end of the day. But if, let's say my 530, I could have, I could have a lot of choices, 
near the Riverview area. But some Riverview areas might be slightly older as well. Or if not, I might have uh, choices more in the Anchorville area as well, also slightly older. So let's say, for example, I only, I only went to view this unit at 203A. Then we can see that this 203A, maybe it's a low floor unit. Yeah, but some people are okay with it, whereas some people are not okay with a corridor unit. So that's something that you might have to consider and factor into your equation as well when you look for properties also. So next thing, it's viewing properties. What to look out for when you're viewing properties. So when you view properties, right, there are things that you need to see and things that you need to ask when you view property, such as you check with, check how's the condition of the renovation. Was it done? And uh, ask the seller how long has they been living in there? Whether are they first seller, first first time owner or uh, first owner or second owner? And whether when was the last time the rewiring was done? Because rewiring is quite important because if the property it's has been there and the wiring has been there for 20, 20 years, chances are you might need to get it changed. Okay? Check also the orientation of the house. If let's say the orientation faces full west. Then you might know that there's a lot of wet sun coming in. It might get hot throughout the entire day also. Okay, and also another thing, ask about who are the neighbors and look at whether are there clutters around the neighborhood, whether is that neighbor the corridor a lot of clutter, whether are they well is it well maintained or well kept or not at all. So and also look out for maintenance issue. Uh, some of it could be wear and tear, but some of it could be leakage. Probably in the toilet, probably in the aircon trunking, and stuff like that also. Things that can be changed, can be solved, can be uh, repaired, it's not a problem. But some things, if it is going to be a huge major hassle at the end of the day, might not be worthwhile considering at all. Once you look at units already, of course you have to shortlist what are the units that is more desirable for you and start looking at what is the market price in that vicinity let's say for example i've i've seen this unit at 258b and i think it's good they didn't state whether it's a high floor low floor and stuff like that but i know that it's a corridor unit because the unit is parallel to the windows uh, it's an indian house definitely it's quite renovated in the toilet but i do not know whether is it is it is it which floor is it so usually what we'll do is that I will start going into uh, HDB website. So when I go inside here, I'll look for 258B Compassville. So I'll look at, okay, the length, the tenure, how long is it? 76 years, okay, it's still relatively young. I'll look at what is the transaction price in the last six months. Okay, last six months, I can, I can see that it's generally uh, six, 10 was the highest so far. 555, 522, 558, 545, and 570. And this is asking at 519 starting from. So actually, it's quite a reasonably priced unit. Even if it's a low floor, 545, but they are asking 519 starting from. Still quite a good price to consider. Sometimes it could be because it's an ethic quota issue. Yes. In this case, it's an ethic quota issue. Then what happens is that the sellers have no choice but to reduce their price even more to find Indian sellers or Malay buyers who is willing to buy in this particular area. So, but if let's say you are Indian and you are Malay buyers and you see this listing at Askan 519 starting from, it's a good buy, I would say. And if probably you can... Uh, try at 500 maybe the, the sellers might consider as well but you never try you never know next point is also understanding what is competition because when you look you also have to see what are the other people selling in the area because if let's say this is asking five five one nine as five one nine then you have units at 525 519 560580 and this is 560 actually it's still a not bad purchase if you were to be able to get one. So after that, you negotiate based on what, what you feel is it's a good price, based on what you've seen, and bingo, I think you can get the right unit that you want already. So I hope all this 
helped so far in, in, in the discussion in, in you finding the right unit? Uh, of course, these things is what I go through with my buyers to make sure that they get the right unit without paying COV, without paying uh, unnecessary higher than market price. Of course, at the end of the day, it has to suit what you desire, what's the main criteria that you're looking at, and also uh, what you feel is the best unit for yourself. I hope this helps. I'm Caleb. See you soon. Goodbye.